One of the downsides to doing something incredible is that it can often be pretty difficult to live up to. The bar is now so high, and if you want to continue that level of success, it's going to have to get higher and higher going forward, and you need to be ready for that. And you could very well say that this was a problem for Microsoft when they released Windows 98 back in, well, 1998. Upon its launch, the OS did receive praise from the public. It not only introduced some great features we still take for granted in Windows today, but it was built around facilitating the use of a domain that was now rapidly growing in popularity, the internet. But that's not to say that things were all perfect. In fact, the OS faced many challenges during its development that would somewhat affect its public appearance building up to its release. And some of these problems even persisted among users following its launch. And this all coincided with the growing legal troubles that Microsoft was facing at the time. Needless to say, things were a bit turbulent. And that was indirectly reflected in the OS's design. Now, this is not to say that Windows 98 was bad or poorly made, but if you were an average Joe back in the 1990s who was already doing just fine browsing the net with Windows 95, you may not exactly have seen a reason to upgrade. In fact, John Montgomery of Byte Magazine stated exactly that in June of 1998, claiming that the new OS offered little, except support for some new hardware that really wasn't making a big impact on corporations yet. And it is with this distinction that Windows 98 was seen more or less by the public as just a re-release of Windows 95. The two versions even looked identical. So to the superficial eye, things really just looked more of the same. But I believe that Windows 98 was much more than that. And despite its flaws and not particularly exciting features at face value, its development serves an integral role in Microsoft's story as well as demonstrates a lot of growth that occurred within the company. And that is just something that cannot be ignored. You know, using Windows 98 now would sure be ridiculous and incredibly old fashioned. I mean, that's almost as outdated as not securing your data when you're online. But good thing you have NordVPN to protect you from that now, of course. <laughs> we don't live in the olden times anymore, because NordVPN allows you to browse the internet and stay online while also keeping your data safe and private using encryption technology. That means you don't have to worry about ISPs keeping track of every website you use or even potentially government censorship. But NordVPN is more than just a VPN. In addition to maintaining your privacy, it also protects you from potential cyber attacks. This includes malware, impersonation, phishing emails, DDoS attacks, password infiltration, and much more. But the one that really stands out to me are man-in-the-middle attacks, where hackers essentially impersonate public Wi-Fi networks so that you end up connecting to them instead. As someone who does online work at coffee shops all the time, this is scary. But with NordVPN, it encrypts all my data so that even if this were to happen to me, hackers couldn't get a hold of it. And for all the gamers out there, they offer a great feature called MeshNet, which allows you and your friends to essentially have LAN parties no matter where you are in the world. I just love it. And if you go to my link nordvpn.com slash nation squid, you can get a two year plan plus four months completely free. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. I just know you'll love it. And if you don't, I will tell on you and spy on you. I'm just kidding, I, I won't spy on you. But just uh, check it out. Yeah, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Now I have said it many times on this channel before and I'll say it again. Windows 95 was huge, groundbreaking. In many ways, it single-handedly defined the second half of the 1990s. I don't think we need to go into more detail on why it was such a big event. I've made an entire video on that if you wanna check it out. But to keep things short, Microsoft was able to make something as sophisticated as an operating system super hip and relatable to everyday people, both through its design and how it was marketed. Microsoft made a game-changing decision to do a complete redesign with Windows 95, implementing the new, much more hands-on start menu to replace the long, antiquated program manager seen in the previous Windows versions. 
and Microsoft shouted this from the rooftops through music videos, pop culture references, and the Rolling Stones, Windows 95 was here to stay. But for how long? It goes without saying that Microsoft was hyper aware of their own recent success. This new product was so big, there's no way they'd be able to top it, at least for a few years, unless they did a whole other overhaul of Windows that was somehow so much better. But even then, people were just getting used to this. So Microsoft really didn't let themselves get too intimidated by that, and kind of just embraced it. From the beginning, Windows 98 was marketed as a tune-up of Windows 95, and it primarily focused on three things fix all the problems that were made well-known in Windows 95, build the OS in a way that is optimized and has a primary focus on access to the internet, and simply just give people a valid reason to upgrade again. And so, immediately following 95's launch, they got straight to work. But this project was under a special code name, Windows Memphis. And just as you'd expect with all betas of Windows releases, they were built directly on top of its predecessor. And while Microsoft didn't really make this a secret in its marketing, Windows 98 is one of the more fascinating operating systems to see grow over the course of its multiple beta versions. It is at around this time that another Microsoft program is making its name known in the computer market, Internet Explorer. It was initially released as a program that you could add on to Windows 95 after purchasing its enhancement software, Microsoft Plus, which was an additional $50. This was the same price as another, much more recognized web browser at the time, known as Netscape Navigator. Renowned for its technological lead among the other web browsers of its time, Netscape quickly became the standard for your everyday cyber needs. It was already so well known by most people and had most software support. So why would it be at all worth it to spend the same amount of money on this new experimental Internet Explorer? I mean, who knows? It could end up being a total flop. But Microsoft didn't feel this way. Even though Netscape had a strong grip on the web browsing world, they just knew they had something with Internet Explorer and they were going to get people to switch one way or another, either subliminally or even by force. This would start a phenomenon known as the Browser Wars, and it would be the very beginning of Microsoft's shaky future with its reputation and even legal troubles. Now, the Browser Wars is a long, complicated, and even ugly story that frankly deserves its own video, so I will keep it at that for now. But Windows 98 was arguably a driving force for Microsoft in winning it. How so? Now, we will really get more into that later. But it starts to become clear in these Memphis beta releases that Microsoft really wants Internet Explorer to be seen. In fact, they would completely rebuild Windows Explorer and derive it directly from Internet Explorer. This was a huge improvement over the pretty unexciting box that it was in Windows 95. Now, it wasn't exactly difficult to use, but it was pretty easy to get lost. It was this aspect of Windows 95 that still shared quite a bit of similarities with Program Manager. But now, it was a whole new experience, taking the address bar from Internet Explorer and using it as a directory bar. If you didn't want to go through a bunch of different folders to get to a specified file, this made it much easier to just copy and paste your desired path. And much like the arrow buttons that allow you to change pages on Internet Explorer, these buttons allow you to go back and forth within directories. In these early beta versions, you can even still see the Internet Explorer logo in the corner. By creating the OS to be centered around this program, it subconsciously puts Internet Explorer on the user's mind. And the more they get accustomed to this Windows Explorer interface, the more they will get used to Internet Explorer. By having these products be uniform in appearance, Microsoft is essentially creating a Windows ecosystem, allowing everything to have a unique, recognizable look to it that can also work together quite seamlessly. As a more recent example, we have seen Apple do this with their products. And much like with them, it plants a seed of familiarity into the user's head. So when they have the choice to pick between Netscape Navigator and Internet Explorer, they may very well just pick Internet Explorer simply because it is more familiar. And these betas provide such an interesting glimpse of that. 
Eventually, the Memphis codename was dropped and Windows 98 was announced publicly in the summer of 1997. But by emphasizing this release as a continuation of Windows 95, it kind of indirectly made Windows 98's problems more noticeable. After all, the public is viewing this as the OS that eliminates the problems that Windows 95 had, so any slip-ups, even minor ones, don't exactly look good. One common problem on Windows 95 was plug-and-play. That term means exactly what it sounds like. If you buy, say, a printer or new set of speakers, rather than having to make all the system adjustments yourself or manually install all the drivers, plug-and-play just did all that for you. Now make no mistake, in 1995, this was revolutionary and a huge leap compared to what Microsoft had before with Windows 3.1. This was actually a highlighted feature in much of Windows 95's advertising. You want me to show them plug and play? Oh, my pleasure, Bernice, baby. <laughs> plug and play, now what is that? Some kind of uh, hair replacement for kids? However, it was far from perfect and at times could even be considered terrible. So many people complained about it, they would even call it plug and pray, because a lot of the time it just flat out wouldn't work. And this was something Microsoft seemed to struggle with, and they intended to make great improvements with it in Windows 98. But during a public demonstration at Comdex, this happened. You'll notice that this scanner build, whoa. <laughs> I've shown this clip quite a few times on my channel before because it is just so crazy. A bunch of articles talking about it came out shortly after. So yeah, while not a huge deal, it wasn't exactly great optics for the product either. Over the time of its development and due to the delays in Windows NT that I discussed in my previous video on Windows 2000, Microsoft would slowly start to ditch the notion that 98 would be an interim release of Windows 95, but instead would start to prop it up as its own standalone product, with Bill Gates saying, Windows 98 will take over from Windows 95 very rapidly highlighting its unique features such as more inclusion of HTML technology, he would add that it is all about ease of use and allowing you to think of offline use of the computer and online use of the computer as the same thing. And then on May 15th, 1998, Windows 98 was released to manufacturing and then officially released to the public on June 25th. The OS was quite well received. In fact, it even did better than Microsoft expected. Its sales performance was actually around the same as Windows 95's within their respective first two weeks. Many users were praising the OS for embracing so many web-related features during the internet explosion, as well as extending a lot more support for things like USB devices. It was also the first Windows to support DVDs and had a built-in DVD player. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But of course, it had its share of critics as well. Many people claimed that they had trouble upgrading their systems using the Windows 95 upgrade pack, saying that it wasn't reading their hardware properly, particularly with Ethernet and modem cards. So in other words, people purchasing the internet OS were unable to get access to the internet. Yeah, quite irritating, but the vast majority of feedback for the product was positive. And one decision specifically on Microsoft's end would be monumental. The decision to have Windows 98 ship with Internet Explorer for free. People now had the choice to either spend $50 on Netscape Navigator or to just get Internet Explorer without having to pay for anything. Yeah, maybe it wasn't as good, but heck, it was free. You can't beat that. This would cause Internet Explorer's popularity to skyrocket, and Netscape was starting to diminish. This would actually be one of the main causes of Microsoft's antitrust lawsuit, as these free versions of Internet Explorer also began shipping with later versions of Windows 95. But this would all snowball during Windows 98's launch, giving them an unfair advantage in the web browser market. While this is arguably the biggest and most controversial thing that Windows 98 did, there were also other notable features it introduced that we still use all the time today. One of these is multi-monitor support. That's right, if you used Windows 95 and wanted your computer to use more than one monitor, you were out of luck. 
But Windows 98 changed all that. It was one of those things that may have seemed small at the time, especially if you were just a casual computer user, that would be insanely useful later on especially as computers got more powerful and could handle using multiple programs at once. It was a lifesaver for multitasking. Another great feature that I honestly could not live without was disk cleanup. It would scan your computer for any files that were no longer being used in the system and just delete them. This included mostly temp files, which were basically files that were created and really only useful while you were running a program at that specific point in time. So in other words, if you went on Internet Explorer last Wednesday, it would delete those files since it's not last Wednesday anymore. This also included old compression files, cache files, old downloaded program files, and occasionally emptied your recycle bin. It basically did spring cleaning on your computer for you, helping up clear sometimes gigabytes of space without deleting any of your personal files that may otherwise seem very important to you. Another quite simple thing that was incredibly helpful. And then arguably the greatest feature of all, Windows Update. For the first time, you could download virtually any Windows security updates completely through the internet. You didn't need to buy some floppy disk or CD-ROM at the store, you could just download it. What better way to embrace this internet-based attitude that the OS had and showing the true capabilities of the cyberspace than by having everything at your fingertips? This feature allowed Microsoft to fix many problems that were overlooked for Y2K. So if Windows Update hadn't existed at the time, who knows, everything probably would have blown up. I'm just kidding, but still, it arguably prevented a lot of Y2K-related glitches from occurring. These are just some of the many great features that Windows 98 brought to the table that were unfortunately mostly overlooked by your everyday, non-tech-savvy computer user. And this was arguably because the UI was so similar to Windows 95. If people can't visually see the difference right away, they're likely not going to think it is that different from what they already have. Despite its great sales performance within its first few weeks, there is actually some debate on what Windows 98's market share was. Some sources claim that its market share peaked in 1999 at only 17.2%, while others say it went up to as high as 30% in 2001. Another source even claimed that it achieved a plurality market share of 45% in 2002. Now, during my research, I found this discrepancy quite interesting. Because there was so much ambivalence throughout its development, either one of these scenarios kind of makes sense. If market share only peaked at 17%, you could make the argument that this was likely because of the cost of Windows 98. At launch, Windows 98 was $205 in today's money, and Windows 95's market share was at 57% in 1999, meaning it had majority support. If you put yourself in the shoes of the average person who may have just bought Windows 95 a couple years prior, perhaps an upgrade really just wasn't worth it? As for the other scenarios, you could argue that the release of Windows 98 SE just a year later increased the OS's presence. It also added more features, such as internet connection sharing. All you had to do was connect one computer to the internet, and any other computers on that local network could connect to that computer and get internet access. So now you only needed one direct connection to the internet instead of a bunch of them. Pretty cool. So yeah, once people got used to it, they likely had more reason to switch. But also, by 1999, the 9X Windows was starting to become outdated, and when Windows 2000 and XP entered the game shortly after, it really hit the nail in the coffin, as these were built on an entirely new kernel. So at the end of the day, it didn't really matter, as these two would dominate the early 2000s. I think Windows 98 was honestly one of the most interesting versions of Windows for me to visit. It was big, yet small. It was beloved, yet dismissed at the same time. It was just clear that Windows 98 didn't really know what it was, and Microsoft couldn't really figure that out either. And during a time of perfecting the Windows experience, browser wars, Y2K, and legal battles, it's no surprise that they were probably a little distracted while creating it. Despite being regarded as a pretty small update, what it both accomplished and aimed to accomplish was integral in showing Microsoft where to go next, 
and pave the road for these future versions of Windows to succeed in the way that they did. But there's also something I've noticed that makes Windows 98 so much better and even still usable today, and that is supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member by clicking the Join tab. I swear, it works. Try it. How did you feel about Windows 98? Love it? Hate it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. A special thanks to my patrons and channel members for making this video possible. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you never miss a future video.